run the screen. There we go. Hello, everybody. How are you? Uh, I'm Alex, and uh, uh, we're ready to go with the program. This is this is the show must go on uh, version of this program. Um, I, I'll explain it in a second. Let me just bring some people on first. Let me get rid of all this stuff here. Uh, there we go. Get down. There we go. And um, uh, bu 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 admit all. Here we go. Here they come. Here are some of our people. Hello to uh, Rick Sheckman. Rick, you're sideways. I don't know why. Uh, well, you should unlock your, uh, your your iPad. I think you've got it locked, maybe. I don't know. That should I don't see where you unlock it. Way. What? I don't see where you unlock it. Well, anyway, we, we can see you with just a sliver. You kind of, yeah. Okay. Well, anyway, we'll live with it, okay? Thank you for wearing a mask. No, don't, no, don't do it. That, if, you, if you if you go on your iPad and you go into how you can rotate, you, oh boy. I don't have my iPad here, otherwise I would tell you. Although if I went on an iPhone, I would tell you that you had to go to. I don't see the. Um, hmm? I don't see the unlock. When it's not unlock. It's it's the rotate. Yeah, setting. It's a little thing in the. Where is it? It's in preferences, right? Preferences are set. I don't. Know. I don't have an iPad, but it's yeah. probably in setup. Does a rotate or not rotate? So I, uh, on a rotate. It's like in here. No. no. Well, I don't know where it is. Let me see here. You have to. You have to take your thumb and like. Stick it up your. You, you have to do a thumb yeah. thing, Rick. Yeah. You have to do a thumb thing. Okay, oh, there let, me, let me yeah. get off and I'll try to figure it out. Well, well, <laughs> You're fine. You, you can do it. Just uh, it, where does he go on an iPad? Is there a. Is it's there... Same, I think it's the same thing. You take your thumb like this and you. And you yeah. Get, yeah, you see like that. And this comes up. Wait a minute. Let me go get my, my oh, iPad. Yeah. Hold on one second here. I'll go get my iPad. It's just like it's just uh, like calling, it's like calling Apple support. Well, then, I don't know why he's wearing that mask. I just updated my virus protection on the computer. Yeah, me too. <laughs> so many people are getting this thing. It's crazy. For for a lot, not this past week, but the week before, my wife wow. tested positive every day. Really? Living in the same space, I never tested positive. Well, think my, my proof of, proof of my ultimate two, negativity. Uh, let me see. We're the only two people I know that um, haven't caught it. Thank goodness. Rick jumped off, Alex. Well, you, no, you don't do that. Uh, hey, Alex, can you hear us? Uh, <laughs> let me see here. I have Alex, no, I have no a weenie. Idea. <laughs> this is going nowhere fast. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's here. It's here. I know that. Here we go to that. You have to do it with your left hand. Right hand doesn't work. Now I'm trying to see here where... Control center, go into settings. Okay. He's not on anymore. He left, Alex. He left? Yeah. Yeah. And I went to all that trouble. Yes. Yeah. That's what makes it all that much more funnier. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see here. Control center, home screen, and dock. Let's see here. I, I don't know where you turn it now. I've lost. I, I'm sorry. I don't even know either. Anybody have an idea on an iPad? Call up. Tell us. Yeah, you know, but anyway, hello, Paul. Uh, hello. Uh, oh, here, I got to add some people, too. Uh, uh, here comes Paula 11. Okay. As opposed to Paula 12. <laughs> A little joke there. Uh, Vernon Nunn's here. Let me see here. Let me add him to the group. Uh, Marjorie will not be with us today. Yeah, uh, she feeling. Uh, she, uh, you know, something. Uh, she's had it for a couple of days more than me, and uh, I think I caught it from her. Actually, is how that whole thing worked. Let me get rid of this. I don't you need have, the have. mask. I was just doing it for a joke. 
I had to wear a mask around the house for a couple of days when I didn't have it, and she did. Uh, she was the first one to test positive, and I tested negative. And uh, then I just I I didn't go into the bedroom. I stay stayed in the uh, guest room here. Let me see here. Let's see uh, if we get check if he's got it now. Uh, we don't know. We don't know. There we go. Where was it, Shecky? Where, where was that? Uh, thing? I reset. I turned it off and turned it back on. Uh, oh, really? Oh, that did it? Okay, now let's see your whole face. There we go. The, the Bill Gates solution. Reboot. What happened? Yeah. What happened? You must, you must reboot, sir. What there happened used to was... be like on the, on the right side, there used to be a button that you would push to yeah. lock the screen, and I don't see it. Yeah, there isn't one anymore. Uh, yeah, but... and as you know, again, I told you the other day, there's no headphone jack either. Well, there is, but it's different. It's the jack on the bottom that you have for like charging it and so on. Yeah. That also will hook up to a set of earphones. You can always oh. do Bluetooth too, right? Huh? You do Bluetooth too, right? You know yeah. I mean? yeah. Yeah, there's Bluetooth, but yeah. Yeah. But anyway, so it, it, you know, Apple's a pain in the ass that way. Mm. They are. So you were saying. <laughs> so what happened was on, uh, I think it was Friday, uh, Friday morning, uh, over Friday night, you know, into Friday morning. Uh, she was coughing a lot, you know, and I said, well, do you have COVID? And she says, no, I don't think I got COVID. I said, well, let's go take a test. And we went and took a test. And uh, guess what? She didn't have COVID. Oh. All right. So we let it go for a day or so. And uh, I'm, I, I uh, did I test negative? No, I didn't do the test because I didn't feel any symptoms. And I figured, hey, if she doesn't have it, then I don't have it. So I don't have to take the test. So the next day, she's coughing and wheezing and, you know, doing whatever. And I said, uh, and, and I, checked her temperature and it was like 99.3 and i said let's do another covid test nah, i don't want to do another covid but we did another, another covid test and it came out positive so i did mine and i came up negative mm. well that's good news all right well so that that was that and she had covid okay so now the next day, I figure, oh, I know what it was. This morning, I had to go to my doctor for to check with him on all this stuff that we found out at the emergency room, which is no doubt the place that Marjorie got it. Probably. Okay. Um, and I think what happened is she got it in the waiting room. I didn't get it in the emergency room, but then we came home and I got it from her. Mm -hmm. All right. So anyway, uh, I was supposed to go to the doctor this morning and I figured, well, I just better check because if we've got COVID here, maybe, you know, they may not want me to go anyway, but if I go with the test saying, hey, I, you know, I don't have COVID. So I tried the test again for me and guess what? <laughs> well, Marjorie and I hadn't been in contact with each other for the last two days. You know, I had the mask on whenever I was near her. I, uh, you know, I attended to her needs, but I had to keep a, a safe distance and keep a mask on because mm. I didn't want to get it. The good news is now that I've got it, we can lie in the same bed again. <laughs> you know, I mean, well, what's it going to do? You know, and not lie in the same bed and not do anything. <laughs> yeah. right. So uh, if you ask me how I'm feeling, I feel. Ugh. Marjorie said, why are you going to do the show? And I said, because doing the show makes me feel good. All right. You know, I mean, I don't think you can tell particularly that I'm sick or ill or whatever. You do but not I, look sick. But I feel very, very, very slow. And, you know, I walk down the street. To, so we, I got the doctor to give us the uh, medication for the, the viral thing, the viral medication. They say, if you take it, it just really kills it. Uh, but I'm, you shouldn't take it unless you've really got symptoms and she's really got symptoms. So this is the last day she can take it. Cause you got to take it within about five days and I've got another four days or so to go. 
But uh, if it gets any worse, I'm going to take it probably starting tomorrow. But I'm going to have her take it starting tonight. So. so what are her symptoms? She's just coughing. You know, she feels like me, sluggish. And the worst I'm feeling is just sluggish. <laughs> and I have a little tickle in my throat. Um, that's the first time I've coughed all day. Okay. So that could be the beginning of a whole bunch of coughing. But I don't know. <laughs> yeah, look on the bright side. <laughs> yeah, look on the bright side. But anyway, we got the uh, the doctor said, well, are you sick enough to get this stuff, this antiviral? And I said, well, I don't know. I said, but I'm not 82 and I'd feel safer if I had a, a, a you know, supply of it in the house. And he said, that's understandable. And he wrote me out the prescription. And Well, they don't write it out anymore. They don't even call it in. They get on a computer and deposit it. I don't know. Whatever. Two, two weeks ago, my, my wife tested because she was going back to, to teach and mm -hmm. she tested positive and we live together. We're together all the time. Right. I never tested positive, never caught it. Really? Did, but did she come down with stuff? Yeah. She's had worse hay fever. Really? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, if people were to say, how do you feel right now? I would say not great, but I don't feel horrible. You know, it's not the like data, the data is clear. Those of us that got vaccinated and boosted have 90, 90 something percent have almost no symptoms at all. 80 percent don't even catch it. Really? But how, but how long do those boosters last? Don't know, but I know they work because I was with her throughout the whole thing. Yeah. And I never I never tested positive. Yeah. Well, it works. I have a little headache, maybe a little tickle in the throat. That's about it. But I don't know if it's going to get worse. And, and so um, what happens is if you, especially if you get respiratory problems from this, this, I uh, uh, can't remember what the name of it is, but this stuff they give you, this antibacterial, uh, supposedly will just clear everything up. I talked to one guy the other day, he said he was in terrible shape, coughing and everything and so on. So his doctor gave him the stuff, he took it, and within two days, he was like 100%, you know, so... You know, it's kind of funny because if Marjorie and I had gotten this two years ago, uh, we'd probably be on a, uh, a, a in, in innovator now. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so the, the vaccines presented prevented that. The vaccines have prevented serious <laughs> illness. That doesn't mean you're not going to get it. Look at me, you know. And we were so proud of ourselves. You know, we were going around going, we haven't had COVID yet. Everybody around us, hey, I got COVID. My uncle got COVID, you know, blah, blah, blah. And we're going, we never got COVID. We've been so safe with this thing. But nobody counted on me being rushed off to an emergency room, which is like a Petri dish for COVID, you know. And so that's a story. Marjorie's, uh, Marjorie's just, you know, she didn't feel like up to doing anything today and that's why she's not calling in but i'm glad the rest of you have and if i get at some point during this hour where i'm too weak to do the rest of the show we'll just do a short show but i i feel like we continue it makes me feel good <laughs> uh, but uh how's everything with you Shaq? everything's good yeah yeah and don't don't go to an emergency room just you know, stay away from that you know, you would think healthcare professionals would be able to do something about it, you know, and they just don't. Well, they don't understand the disease or how to deal with it. Well, after all this time, I think we have pretty good indication how to deal with it, you know. Okay, tell me how to deal with it. Take two aspirin, call me in the morning. Yeah, take, take, <laughs> take these pills where they're giving me a different dose. They're giving me a lighter dose because they don't want to affect my kidneys. They did the same thing with Marjorie. Um, apparently, this thing has wreaked some kind of havoc on your kidneys. So if you're older and you've got, a, got your kidneys, they're not what they were old, what they used to be, uh, you know. So, but the doctor prescribed the right stuff. And you can't take a statin with this stuff. Because it counteracts the stuff. And, and Marjorie can't take her uh, Xanax. Xanax doesn't play well with this drug. So who knows what they put in this shit, you know. But 
<laughs> but that's it. You know, that's me. That's how I'm feeling. How many here? Anybody here had COVID? No. Oh God, I hate you. What? What are you, Mike? I'm. My wife had it. I had symptoms for a couple of days of a cold, kind of like what you're talking about here. Like, like again, this is not. This is just a few months ago. Yeah. Uh, but I never tested positive, and I tested myself every day. So. Yeah. But I don't know. Like, yeah. Well, so. we were so proud of the fact, right? I think when you were out here, Paula, we were proud that we didn't have, uh, we didn't catch COVID. Anybody in your family got it? Uh, yeah, uh, I've had I've heard more stories lately than I've heard in a long time, and they totally contradict what you see in the in, in the statistics. So I think that, but but not um, nothing dire. Nothing uh, dire. Right. But and for a bunch of age age ranges, I've I've heard uh, uh, a lot of different stories. Uh, um, my son's um, friends, who are the same age as him, uh, um, the, the man and his wife uh, both had a, were out for a week. Wow. Yeah, and they're all everybody's boosted and uh, uh, vaxxed and boosted, but you know it, it can still be. Sometimes it's nothing. Sometimes it's a big thing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But not, but not dire. Not dire. Okay. And I'm, I'm glad to hear that. that so Mar Marjorie is just taking it easy. Well, right? I told her when she said that, you know, she really didn't feel like going on. And I, I don't understand that because I come from a showbiz background. The show must go on. Yeah. Right. You know, and what am I going to do anyway? Just lie there and do nothing. At least here I'm talking to some people I like talking to, you know, this kind of gives me a certain invigor, uh, in vigor, as a result of, of doing it. The show but, must but but she won't go she, on. she wouldn't <laughs> she doesn't want didn't want to come on. So yeah. I told her that if she didn't come on and somebody like you asked, well how's she doing? I'm gonna say, well she's in Mount Sinai right now. <laughs> <laughs> and she's on a on an in innovator. Um but I thought I'd come back and do the show and I'm by the way when she's finally well I'm not gonna pick her up at the hospital. <laughs> 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 but I told her that I that I would tell everybody that she was really deathly ill and in the hospital if she wouldn't right. come on and talk to you and tell you herself how she is. But uh, she deserves a day off. She's all right. Well, you so do I, but I don't do it because <laughs> I thought this whole thing up. Yes. Well, this is your fault. Yeah. Let me see here. What? What? Wait a minute. Why? Oh, oh, there. That's. Oh, there. There's everybody. I just wanted to make sure that it was. Uh, uh, you know, the trouble is when I sometimes when I make somebody a friend on Facebook, they start going, "Hi, how are you?" <laughs> hey, here's a voice message. Talk to me, and I'm going. I don't want to talk to you. I just made you a friend. That's it. You know, there's no obligation that I have to talk to you. And if he keeps bothering me, I'll you know, defriend him. I think. But, but, but Alex, Alex, how are you? <laughs> okay, you're defriended. Now, here, here's something I want to show you. I want to show you. This was yesterday. Yesterday, I went down to the uh, drugstore. What did I want to buy? There was something I wanted to buy. It should say it here on this receipt somehow what it was I bought. Oh, yeah, I bought a, bought a, 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 a what do you call it? A kit, uh, you know, for, for uh, testing, a testing kit. Mm. And I went to CVS. You want to see the receipt from CVS? Oh, the 500 mile long one? Yeah. They're the worst. I don't That's how you can find your way back to CVS, the end of it. <laughs> this is almost this is almost half as tall as I am. I think it's about a yard long. Why do they do this? So they they can. give you a discount on feminine hygiene products? Oh, well, well here, here are the various <laughs> things that I, I uh, let me put my glasses on here. It's amazing. Um, excuse me, I'm a little lightheaded. I think CVS is in bed with big paper. With right. big paper, yeah. Okay, pay only $4.99 uh, for Ricola cough drops. Well, that, that, that at least is something I might use here. Um, let's see, $2 off any reading glasses. Okay. Any discounts from Fleet? I get four dollars off the, <laughs> the baby care. Oh, here's three dollars off on any tampons, liners, or pads. Nice. Uh, yeah. They don't have any tampons. Huh? I read. I, I, I read about that. There's a tampon shortage in the country. Is the there whole, really? Yes. 
Yeah, well, yeah. That's, that, that's the best part about menopause, then, I guess. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, $2 off on Colgate toothpaste, toothbrushes, mouthwash, or whitening pen. Is this your way of getting monetized on this podcast? Yeah, $5 off uh, <laughs> allergy relief. $4 off antacid, probiotic, heartburn, or stomach remedy. Here, $5 off of Neutrogena facial care. Uh, $3 off of Pantene hair care. Two fifty dollars off CVS brand <laughs> floss picks. <laughs> Jesus. And uh, $2 off CVS health brand dental floss. Oh, we got two things for dental floss. Isn't that wonderful? There Nothing for plan B. Huh? What, a, what a waste of a forest, huh? <laughs> and, and that's, that, that's uh, assuming they have that's assuming they have them on the shelf so that you can take advantage of that coupon. Yeah. Or, or I can find the coupon in the midst of all of the other coupons. Yeah. So I I uh, um, I should go down there and spend the whole day getting all the stuff on here and telling them I want it. You know, and then, you know, sitting there laboriously ripping off the segment. I guess you got to have a. Don't encourage them. Well, I guess you got to go get a, a, a pair of scissors and cut off each of these coupons. That's far more work than I should have to go to as the customer. Don't you think they could do this digitally somehow? They do. Yeah, they can. They yeah. do on their they app. Can. You'll get all those on your app too if you have a CBS app on your phone. And you can go to CBS. Go to probably. CBS and the the other thing is, you get twenty five percent off twenty five percent off COVID. So that because that's <laughs> another, that's another thing you can get at CBS. You you, you know you can get CBS. You can go and get you you can get uh, tested now at CBS. They have a little only doctor. if you make an appointment. Huh? Only if you make an appointment. Only if you make an appointment. Oh, okay. Just, it is. How how accurate are these home tests? Not bad. They're, they'll give you. They won't give you false positives. They'll give you false negatives. For false, the most part. false negatives. Yeah. Yeah. So if it's positive, you're positive. Yes. Yeah. Typically, yeah. That's the, that's what the data says. So well, I did. If it says Mar positive. You are. If it says negative, <laughs> most likely you're negative. I did Marjorie twice the other day. <laughs> How's it going? Did you know, he give her some thing to be telling us? And then I I kissed her after I was through. No, uh, I I did, I I, did, I gave her two tests. I, she came out uh, positive, uh, negative, and I just wanted to make sure she was negative. And the second test came out the same way. So apparently, it took about twenty four hours before she became not contagious. I think you're contagious before that. Mm -hmm. You know, you're contagious before you have symptoms. Now, how long are you not? How long afterwards are you not contagious? Know he that. says five days. Is yeah, it five days? The current is five days. So, in other words, if she got her her symptoms on Friday, and tomorrow is the fifth day, after tomorrow she doesn't have to worry about the. Uh, I think it home. says five days after symptoms start, you can really. You don't have to quarantine, but you. I mean, because a with, with a lot days. of other with a lot of other stuff, you know, that you get, they say that well, you're you're you can, you're infectious for the first couple of days before you even get it, and then uh, you get it, and w after you've had it for a couple of days, you're no longer contagious. All right, so I don't know, I don't know, but enough about me. I'll just pass out now. Uh, <laughs> So um, uh, what's new, Lynn, out where you are? Well, it's going to be 102 tomorrow here. So that's... Uh, oh, really? Hot. Yeah, it's going to be a hot week, uh, over 100 all week. And uh, so, yeah. yeah. Other than that, it's pretty quiet. Um, yeah. The Warriors yeah. parade this afternoon. That was kind of cool. 77 degrees right now here in New York. Uh, that sounds lovely. Did you go to the parade, Lynn? No, no. What parade? Oh, the parade for the Warriors? Yeah. There's, there's so many parades going on, I have to keep them straight. Well, putting 100,000 people in that little city just is not a good thing. 
I mean, you've got, we had the Juneteenth parades. Right. During Gay Pride Month, where there are a whole set of other parades. Yeah. Yet we were also, yesterday was Father's Day. So mm-hmm. it was Father's Day, Gay Pride Month, and Juneteenth. Yeah. You know something? When did they it's start getting... having parades for Father's Day? Yeah, I didn't get one. <laughs> I didn't. I didn't get one. Do you ever notice that Father's Day just doesn't seem as important as Mother's Day? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, if you don't if you don't get your mother something for Mother's Day, you're never going to hear the end of it. If you don't get something for your father, he's not he doesn't even know how to do a guilt trip. Right. You know. Paula, you look like you disagree with me. <laughs> don't start. <laughs> <laughs> But anyway, all these parades are conflicting with each other. I hear a parade outside our window, and I say to Marjorie, which one is that? <laughs> because here, of course, you know, oh, Juneteenth, big deal, you know, which it should be. Gay Pride gay- Month. I see, I, I'm a little, I, I don't agree with Gay Pride Month, and here's why. Why do they get a whole month, and black people only get one day? Well, they get, a, no, they get a month. They, uh, oh, there like, is a great yeah. gay, there is a Black Pride Month. Yeah, yeah I think the it's the shortest month. It's the shortest month in February. I think well, it's I some other people start other stuff. Aren't we going to run out of months? And then what do they do when there are no more months left? Yeah. We'll, we'll um, go metric and make it 25 months a year instead of 12. Oh, I see. Okay. <laughs> but, uh, I mean, it was, just, it was just so much stuff going on yesterday. I don't know how many more federal holidays they can come up with, you know. No, I, it, it, it's it's Juneteenth is now a federal holiday, is it? Yeah. 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 But yeah. it is not, I think, a paid holiday. In other words, if I work for a company, uh, Juneteenth is not a a holiday for them. It's only it's only a federal holiday for employees and things like that. Yeah, I don't know anybody that's got it off except for banks and and the post office. And that's- yeah. Oh, well, what? What, uh, you know, uh, Mandy is going to now inform us because I think she may have an answer here. Well, I, it should have been today. That's another long story, but I had Friday off. Oh, oh, really? But it should have been today because they were celebrating. It was Juneteenth uh, on Sunday, celebrated on Monday. Yes. Or observed on Monday. Was in charge of doing the calendar, which was not me. Yeah. Uh, made a mistake, and yeah. then they were too stubborn to change it. Oh, okay. <laughs> I know. Yeah, because yeah. I looked at the calendar and it said Juneteenth, and then Juneteenth observed on Monday. Mm-hmm. Right. But I guess I just know my trash isn't going to get picked up until Wednesday. <laughs> <laughs> okay. But Juneteenth is Juneteenth is technically it's supposed to be June nineteenth, right? Isn't that the the deal yes. with it? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I I don't know why they call it Juneteenth. I'm I, I'm you know I, I'm sure there's some kind of answer to that. Uh, but why did we only? It's almost like we never observed that day in any way, shape, or form prior to becoming a national holiday. Right. Well, Juneteenth That's is correct. that. American term for it. That's what they had always called it. Really? I, yeah. That's what it was called in the African American community. Oh, okay. Well, I guess, you know, but I've lived I've lived in an African American community for now eleven years. And I'm sorry. Uh, I never heard of it. And nobody was having a parade prior to what this year? I think it was the first well, year. I'm not sure the George George Floyd issue i believe is when it kind of really kind of yeah yeah came forth and um, but don't 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 the uh, don't the uh, hispanics in this country deserve their own federal holiday and and don't don't the asians shouldn't they have their own national holiday i i, I what are the hispanics going to celebrate when texas became a state but you know what they're calling it though <laughs> They're calling it Juneteenth, and it's subtitled, I think, Freedom Day, mm-hmm. so that it can celebrate freedom, which I think is the the out on this whole thing. Uh, anyway, oh gee, I wish I had some masks. That's apparently the date that it was 
the last state was declared free of slavery. Or I something. think that was it. Yeah, it was Texas. Yes. What a, what a surprise. Galveston, yeah. Galveston, Texas. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, and it, and it actually took another almost hundred years for us to even put some real love and caring behind that notion that everyone is free, you know, because yeah, I mean, that's huh? definitely, I, mean I, I definitely agree that it's a, a, something to definitely be celebrated and observed. Oh, I have no, I have no doubt about it, but it's just, there's so many other things going on at the same time. You get confused. Yeah. yeah. Marjorie, what's the parade out our window today? <laughs> um, but anyway, and then uh, I was, Alex, mm -hmm. last week I was watching the show like on Tuesday. Yeah. And I'm definitely commiserating with you because last Monday, I basically almost had to go to the hospital too. Really? For a stomach thing. So when you were talking about being sick and having to go to the hospital, mm -hmm. I was like, I literally had this overnight odyssey of being sick that's why i wasn't on the call because i was probably sleeping did but, you did you uh did you uh go to the emergency room i i did not that night but i was sick all night long and then i drug myself to like urgent care on Monday. urgent care okay yeah well but, uh, uh, you know the emergency room if you go to the emergency room and especially if you go please call an ambulance and, and the reason for that is you get prime service the minute you get there. They just roll you right into the emergency room. You don't have to sit in the waiting room and go, I'm sick, I'm ill. With all those other sick people, they roll you right in because, you know, they're not going to let you lie on a gurney in the waiting room. Yeah, I don't have Medicaid care like you do. So when I was laying there debating what I should do, I was, all I could think was, oh, my gosh, if I call an ambulance, it's going to cost $2,500. <laughs> So, well, we have we have the insurance where they pay everything. In other words, Medicare pays 80 percent and they pay the other 20. And there's no question. So I don't think I'll get a bill for anything. But I'm figuring everybody I've told this story to says that bill's going to come to, you know, uh, twenty thousand dollars. Yeah, because I, I, mean, I, I hmm? had food poisoning like you were convinced. Yeah. But I mean, I couldn't get up. I mean, there was no way I could. You know, and if I well, stay, yeah, you had then you had an incident where you hit your head. Well, so. also, yeah, but I but then I got to the emergency room. They gave me every test known to mankind. Mm -hmm. The only one they missed, they didn't stick a finger up my ass. That was the <laughs> only thing that's they called, didn't do. That's called CYA. They were going to cover the, yeah. all their bases. Yeah, they didn't want to get sued. But then I was also going to tell yep. you. I, I, I started to watch her Gabnet. I think it was Wednesday's program. Yeah. Uh, I I thought I just I wish Charlie was on the show because I saw that he commented that he wasn't going to be on today because he had he was going to the movie with his daughter. Yeah. But I I was cracking up at Charlie like his face his facial expressions cracked me up. Have you ever looked at his face? <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. He's like. Yeah. <sighs> Like you just can tell he just wants to go through the screen and just punch somebody. <laughs> but what was it? What would he want to punch it for? I was just telling my story, right? Talking about, um, what were you talking about on Wednesday? Who's the guy that you always have on? Oh, Phil. Phil. Oh, Phil. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I want to punch him too, honestly. But um, just when he was talking about Trump and everything and just, I don't know. And I think you had Tony. Well, that's on. why I love this show. There's none of that stuff that goes. That's what I, that's what I, I haven't you know? watched it in a really, really long time. So when I watched it, I just cracked up because I was like, yeah. And this yeah is if I told everybody on this show, be sure to watch The Ramble. If you enjoy this show, watch The Ramble. They would be so disappointed <laughs> because but, of the, of the animal. You, like, you know, you, you give them a voice and you give it right back. I mean, it's a good place to go back and forth. Oh yeah. I'm not, I don't let them get away with anything, but no. you know, as I get older, why should I work at this? I like this. This is casual. Yeah. No harm, no foul. You know, yeah. um, we're having a you know, nice time talking to each other. Yeah. Um, I did have somebody, however, write me about Shecky and what they wrote me was, is Shecky ill? Yes. 
And I said, and I wrote back, why do you think he's, no, he's not ill. Why do you think so? And they said, well, he's always lying down. They thought he was like a paraplegic, although I have one of those already. And a guy named Patrick. Well, I can go in the other room and sit in a chair, but what's the point? Right, right. And we but, know where you're getting a sponge bath, Rick. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I've got some woman here working um, below the belt, kind of, so to speak. Work, working your mojo. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I just, like I said, I wish Charlie was here because I wanted to give him a complete shout out and just be like, I was right there with you, man. Spirit, I was given the well, same. He, he's very pressure. loyal to the shows we do, except when there's something else to do. I mean, yeah. he, well, he, he like a uh, coach. Co uh, coaches umpire. umpires in baseball yeah mm -hmm. and uh and is is the boss of them and uh so he's you know he's during baseball season he's kind of out for a while you know it's it's Was that such and go. ever on your serious show who some show who that guy phil uh no okay so he just started joining in on when you started doing the phil was a guy that i knew Ram when I was doing San Francisco, I went back to San Francisco and was doing my show at KMEL. He kind of was my producer. Okay. He kind of just helped me out because he wanted to help out. Mm -hmm. But that's when I knew him. And then when he first showed up on these programs, I said, you say you know me, but I can't remember you. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, uh, but uh, I, I vaguely remember him now, you know. Yeah. But, uh, uh, yeah. What the trouble with Phil is this is what I have a problem with Phil. Uh, he's actually a nice guy. Mm -hmm. He's actually a decent guy. I mean, uh, you know, if, if he finds out, he hasn't probably found out yet that I have COVID, I'd, I'd, I'd get a note from him going, Are you okay? You know, you're fine. Mm -hmm. Not that I can do anything. Is there anything you need? You know, so he's a really nice, considerate guy. So that's but, what his, but his politics are so inhumane. <laughs> that's what I mean. That's what makes it more frustrating. Because I mean, yeah. he's a nice person. Why do they got to think that's well, I'm sure we all have friends like that who, you, who are really nice. You know, they're decent people and you, you like them. Because you wouldn't be friends with them if they were decent, right? right. But mm -hmm. their opinions on politics are horrible Trust and you, you'd like to kill them. Yes, I have many. Now he's having an influence on Tony. What? Well, yes, yes. Now he's having an influence on Tony. And yeah. I can see what Marjorie was saying. Like, if she's going to be on the show, if he was on this show, she was not. If he, if he, <laughs> if Tony called the show, I was like, she, she, oh my god, say goodbye. <laughs> yeah. And uh, got to come on this show and see what all the, the fuss is about. I've never seen one of the evening shows. I got to jump on and see. Well, what all it, you know, on. ask ask uh, Shecky. I mean, he, he Tony's just... a very good person. Yeah, I had a problem. What is it now? Ten days ago, where my right leg wasn't working and I couldn't get out of bed. Mm. He came over here and he cooked for me. Really? Oh. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> You know, the only problem is you allow him to cook for you, and then you keep hearing from him over and over and over. You well, know, the other, I think I spoke to you the other day. It was Saturday. He'd already called me four times that day. Yeah. But it was to check on me. It wasn't yeah, just. It's kind of it's kind of like Beetlejuice. You say his name three times, <laughs> and he's there. You know. But no, he's he's a good person. That's. Yeah. Yeah, no, there's nothing saying. wrong. Tony is not a mean person. No, no, no. One time on the show, he told me to go fuck myself because he was in a bad mood or something. And I went, it's so <laughs> unlike Tony, you know. So. I mean, I need to go back and watch the Wednesday one again because mm -hmm. I feel like I'm still kind of in a fog. But I just the discussion y'all was having was so infuriating. And I was like, God, I wish I had been on it. But then I'm like, you know, oh that God. was a short show though, because I had trouble with the new, I, I, yeah. it was my new uh, equipment is working beautifully. It's the best computer I ever bought, but all the other programs have had to catch up with it. Mm -hmm. And something was off and I couldn't figure out what, because we weren't getting audio from the guys. So finally the show wound up being a half hour. Yeah. And it, but it was good. I mean, it was a really, fast tight, 
That's why I'm thinking of going down to a half hour on that show. <laughs> yeah. <You know? laughs> Well, I, that's all I could take, man. I was like, yeah, yeah. Charlie's cracking me yeah, up. I watched, and just I, wa- what? I watched that show when I when I was eating my lunch yesterday, and I and I about barked when I heard Bill talk about Trump uh, uh, keeping all of his promises. Yeah. yeah. Uh, well, the one about I fucking up the up. country, he certainly kept. You know, <laughs> Charlene, how are you doing? Doing good. How Bring are you? In. I guess you're not doing so good, huh? Well, you know, I mean, I wish I could say this was horrible and get me to the hospital and get me a respirator, but I'm, I'm not at that point. <laughs> well, I'm glad to hear that. Both my daughter and son-in-law have, have it right now for the second time, so, but they've never been vaccinated. Oh, why not? Because they don't believe in vaccinations. Well, <laughs> um, I don't believe is, in I don't believe in respirators. Okay, so yeah, look okay, I avoid yeah. them at all costs. Right? Hey, how could you not believe in vaccines? They exist. I've seen them. Yeah. <laughs> well, you don't know my daughter and son-in-law. It's basically but the they're son-in-law. in a little bottle. You, you know, we have real. gotten <laughs> we've gotten to a point in our lifetime where we have the ability to thwart off disease by the use of vaccines. It's, a, you know, it's something we invented. How great are we? We invented this. And then for people to say, I'm not going to do it because it's bad for me. No, it's good for you. I know. It's stupid, huh? Yeah. Very stupid. And especially these vaccines, which aren't even the same as normal vaccines. You're not, you're not piping the disease into your per, the person for right. a little bit of immunity. Yeah. It's a whole different technology. And uh, of course, if you don't, the only thing I mind about it is the little chip they insert in the vaccine. (laughs) (laughs) It got me $10 off of my my renewal of windows. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. And this new. The thing I want to ask uh, any anti vaxxer I run across, if they they say they're an anti vaxxer, I'm going to say, oh, so you don't believe in science. Well, they obviously don't, you know. So are you on the internet? Oh, oh, well, you do believe in science. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, and, uh, but those, some of those people will tell you they're not on the internet. They don't want people to follow them. They don't want somebody to steal their identity. And this is from people who have no life at all, okay? They're afraid of somebody <laughs> stealing their identity. That's a joke from Larry hmm. Bubbles Brown. I have to quote him on it. Uh, but, I mean, they, 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 it's kind of they're kind of uh, egotistical to think they're so important that somebody wants to steal, steal their right. identity. You know, the only thing they want to do is charge something in your name and that they can do. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, you know, the, the evidence is that, that the more that you argue uh, with, with people that, that hold these views, the more they double down. Really? So, it's oh, true. Yeah. Oh yeah, that's, that's true. Like yeah. Charlene, out of out of your love for these people, who mm-hmm. are they? Your uh, children? My or? daughter, my daughter, and my son-in-law. And your son-in-law. Yeah, my son-in-law's uh, the one that's really gung ho, and she goes along with it. He, they have two kids, but they do get the vaccinations that the little kids are supposed to get, but they will not get the. Um, well, you know why they get them the, for the kids? They can't. They can't put them in school. Right. Yeah. Well, yeah, but I mean, they won't give them the the COVID one, but the measles, mumps, all that they give them, but they won't give them the COVID one and they won't do the COVID one. How do you handle that, Charlene? It's it's difficult because I want to tell them I think they're idiots, but (laughs) (laughs) but I I can't I can't say that. I just I I just don't understand it myself. They just Charlene, the correct term is COVID idiot. COVID (laughs) idiot. Use the right language. Here's a okay, question. I will. Here's a question, though. Um, I was led to believe that if you get COVID, you don't have to worry after that because you've created an immunity to COVID, right? No. But apparently that's not true with COVID because you look at a guy like Jimmy Kimmel, for instance, who got COVID and two weeks later was out again with COVID. Mm-hmm. Well, any, any predictions about, about um, the disease were you know like how to have errors in it because we've never faced this before so well, nobody, you know, the truth is that nobody knows if you if you do have something wrong with science and scientists is that they don't have the ability to go i don't know 
Right. You know, I mean, there's got to be a certain point at which you got to go. Sorry, I don't know. You know, people, I, people, I, don't like, <laughs> people don't like to hear that. Yeah. You know, Alex, the Jimmy Kimmel thing after you've had COVID, you can test positive again shortly after because it's it's not completely out of your system. But it's not getting it a second time. So that's what ha- that's what happened yeah. to him. He tested. Yeah, but but when 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 months later you get it again, and there's a lot of cases where the second hit is worse than the first. That's People how my had kids mild are. COVID, and they get hit the second time, and it's it's even worse. Yeah. So, but, yeah, my kids, it's the second time, and they had it at Christmas. Um, yeah, Jeff, did you have your hand up, Jeff? Boy, turn on turn on your microphone. He's very considerate and turns off his microphone when he's not talking, which is most of the time. So off. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. It's, you know, oh. wait a minute. Unclick, uh, unclick your mic, your mic, the microphone there. There you go. There, there you go. go. I'm sorry. Yeah. Um, I was just saying, I know somebody who's uh, who takes the medication mm-hmm. and has gotten COVID three times. Oh. On the vaccine? Yeah. Big symptoms or no? Yeah. Uh, yeah, but isn't it that the, the strains, the different strains uh, make some of the vaccines not applicable, like almost like an NA at that point? Just different strains of it? That's not what I've heard. What I've heard is that they're, they're good against most of the strains, but that they can, you can, I don't know why, like, for instance, I've been fully inoculated, all four shots, right? God, I feel like a pet. You know, has your dog had shots? <laughs> uh, but, uh, you know, I, I, I've had all the shots, and yet here I am. I've got COVID. Well, how did that happen? I think what they're saying is the shots now are not something to prevent you from getting it, but they prevent you from getting it seriously. They said that from the beginning. Yeah, yeah. And, and I think that, that some people that, misinterpret it. I'm willing to survive with that. You know, I mean, I don't feel like I have full COVID and I hope this doesn't get any worse than it is now. But if it does, I can't, you know, I've still got this other medicine, which supposedly really knocks it out. You know, it's a massive antiviral. Yes, Paula. Yeah, no, my understanding about the the virus is that the, the virus keeps mutating and the scientists have to keep up with all the mutations. So after a certain amount of time, whatever the vaccine was that they came up with is good, but not good enough for the mutation. So there, there's, they have to keep, they have to, they have to, they have to keep the yeah. process going. Well, I think whoever gets the, the vaccine right now is probably getting a different version of it than was here when they first started giving out the shots. You know, we're the first in line. Uh, and, and I bet the current first shot covers a lot of that right but you know still i mean boosters hell if you have to have a booster every year i'll Mm -hmm. line up for it in a second uh not a disease i want to die of and what's amazing is is that i'm sitting here going well you know i'm not feeling too terribly great by now if this had happened two years ago without the vaccine i'd be at mount sinai with a you know tube down my throat so You know, uh, we can have. I ask, can I ask a question? There's a there's a gentleman. He just had his hand up, and he he has a Franz Kafka shirt. Ah. And yeah. and I am really curious about uh, about that shirt. Uh, uh, is that your like your favorite shirt? And why why it's, of all people? For, well, because uh, one morning. Oh, for Prague. Oh, okay. For one. Is that morning. where you bought it? Yeah. I like it. One morning. He woke up and he was a cock. <laughs> <laughs> this is the only show that I can ever be on that will have a metamorphosis joke. I'm so excited about that. Joke. I was going to say that well too. Well done. And, and might I say, might I say, uh, Mike, that's the first metamorphosis joke I've ever made. <laughs> <laughs> well, hopefully not the last because it's a hell of a book. But then again, I can't say that I've met anyone else wearing a Franz Kafka t-shirt. <laughs> That's I story once I saw the hell out they're selling them. I bought one. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's perfect. Were you in Prague? I guess that's where you were, right? Yeah. So. Yeah. <laughs> did you? What did you go there for? The porn? 
<laughs> that's, that, that, was, that, that was the porn capital of Europe. Really? I didn't More know porn that. made in Prague than just about any other place in Europe. Yeah. I never knew that. Well, I did, but then how did I find out? It's a hobby. It's a hobby. <laughs> they go for the absence and stay for the porn. Uh, yeah, right. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Do they serve absinthe there? Only the best. You know, I tried absinthe, I think, once. And I can't remember if it really got me high or not. Mm. You know. But uh, it was a very popular drink uh, during, what, the 20s, maybe? My. Am I thinking it out right there? And in the twenties, something like the twenties, yeah, yeah. And they served it. Sorry, it, I'm too young for that. Well, it was it was a green liquid, green liquid. They called it the green imp, and uh, people would drink it, and it got them high. You know, it was a good, it was a good buzz. Uh, and uh, for some reason, I think they made it illegal here for a long time, and now it's not illegal anymore. You you can get absinthe if you go looking for it. Isn't it kind of poisonous? Though? No, no, huh? no, no, no. That was propaganda, huh? That was propaganda. Oh. Yeah. Um, but uh, so what? What the hell? No, absinthe goes back to Van Gogh, back to the eighteen hundreds. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, but I'm saying it. It reached a large amount of popularity during the twenties, I think. Here, uh, Van Gogh. That, yeah, that's not a good example. Somebody in the United States, so. By the way, he pronounced it correctly. Then I, I, I got that, but he, he, that's not a good example of somebody who was saying. And what I like about it is I've been having my throat's been a little rough today, so when I say Van Gogh, <laughs> yeah. But uh, anyway, so um, uh, you know what I love Edward Berger doesn't say a word on this show. <laughs> no, no, I, I say some things. Remember, I was telling him how to fix his iPhone. Oh, yes, right. Okay. Yeah, for everything you forgot. But, but, yeah, um, but he, he waxed poetic on that because it was like a cartoon character uh -huh. trying to tell him how to fix it. Yeah. But you, what happened, Ricky? You just turned it off and on again, and that's all it yeah. took? Yeah. yeah. Son of a bitch. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Because somewhere there is a rotation thing is that you can uh, change it i'll i'll find it so you know future future reference it's in the quick settings yeah so uh let me once but again charlene uh, with your mm -hmm. with your daughter and her husband yeah uh getting sick again uh um uh, how bad has it been both times just um not really that bad yeah. considering they haven't been vaccinated how, but... yeah, how old are they and they're 20 um 26 yeah. and 27 yeah you know you can be a little chancy at that age right because but when you get to be our age or more particularly yeah. my age which is ancient it it it's devastating it's mm -hmm. devastating you know yeah i feel it's very uh risky for me oh yeah well you have the heart thing in it. You know, and I have certain com comorbidities, I think they call them. I mean, my uh, uh, the cancer stuff I went through probably did something. Mm -hmm. You know, I know it, it, it screwed with my platelet count, you know, because I had all that radiation. Uh, so it, it's, you know, it, 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 this can't be good if you've gone through anything drastic in your time. And in your case, uh, you're pretty much the bionic man. That's true. Yeah. But I also had the opportunity to, to talk to Mem and Oz several times. Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah. That's pretty, by itself, that's pretty risky. Uh, yeah. I uh, He used to work down the hall from me at Sirius yeah. XM. And yeah. he was very well known around the floor as a big asshole. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What were you known as, Alex? Uh, as a wonderful, warm, accommodating human being. Ask, ask, boy. ask Rick. Am I? Well, you used to buy breakfast for all your guests. Yeah. Well, I didn't buy it because I had a uh, restaurant that for a free plug every morning would give us all free breakfast. But ah. you know, <laughs> at least I arranged it. You buy me any breakfast. Hmm? 
didn't buy me any breakfast. Well, no, that was here in New York. Oh, okay. You didn't visit me in San Francisco. Otherwise, I would say, come on, let's go to the thing was called the stuffed bagel. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And we would all go after the show, and I would take people down there, and we'd all sit around and have something to eat for bread. We'd have breakfast is what we'd have. So, and the I don't know what was, flavors they are, but a stuffed bagel feels pretty damn good right about now. Well, we talked stuffed bagel, mentioned them a lot. I mean, like, uh, well, are you guys are going to eat the stuffed bagel after the show. Yeah, you know that kind of plug, mm. and it was they weren't, you know, offensive plugs. But I was allowed to do them also because the station said, okay, yeah, sure, take these people off the line for breakfast. Mm. You know, it's not stealing any money from us. And I, I, you know, all these people supplied my program with their talent and they should have gotten some kind of, besides just being on the show, which was very good for them. I felt the desire and the need to take them out to breakfast. In fact, I, I actually started taking people out to lunch from the very beginning of doing interviews when I was at WMCA here in New York, after my show, I would take people out to some place to have a, you know, a late, because we were always through about one o'clock in the morning, but you know, you know, Shecky, how restaurants are open. Well, we used to, when we did that, what was it, Tuesday or Wednesday night show on Channel C or whatever? Yeah. And we go out to dinner afterwards. Yeah. At one in the morning. Yeah. <laughs> and and uh, that's where I took Abby Hoffman out, I think, to the first little meal we had after a show. And he and his wife, uh, Anita, uh, joined me. And, and Ronnie, who was my wife at the time. And uh, I remember we were having breakfast and we, we had just had a cat who had given, you know, gave out it with a litter of like seven kittens. And, you know, once you've got kittens in the house, anybody who you can talk to, you'll say, would you like a kitten? You know, because you don't know what to do with it because you're not about ready to take them to the ASPCA and let them give it away. So, Mar uh, Susan, uh, Ronnie, rather, uh, looks at Abby and goes, um, uh, I, you know, would, uh, do you like, do you like little, do you like little kittens? You know, kind of trying to start the conversation going. And immediately Abby, without even batting an eyelash, because he had been a clinical psychologist, immediately looks at her and goes, are they good to eat? <laughs> i have a question for you alex yeah what's the uh percentage of the folks that you took out for lunch after you interviewed them where during the lunch you said to them why the hell didn't you talk about that during the interview no never 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 once happened okay. never once once i'm through with an interview i'm through with an interview if i didn't ask the right questions then i'm you know why why should i ask somebody what the right question might have been. Oh, there you go. Plus, I don't do interviews. I hold conversations. Right. The difference. Right. Yeah. You know, but uh, yeah. Uh, so, Shecky, anything big for this week? Anything up to anything big? No, I'm still just taking it easy. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I have a feeling I'm going to be taking it easy for about five days because mm -hmm. I did go down the street, but I wore my mask. And I had to go and I had to go get the the, uh, the medication uh, for our in case we want to take it uh, for our uh, our condition. And um, it was hell walking down the street for me. Just, you know, just kind of exhausting. But after this is over, I will call Shecky as I do after the show. And uh, then I will put the post the show, and then I will say that's it. Yeah. Nap time. Huh? <laughs> nap time. Nap time. I don't know if I can get a nap, but I'm just gonna. I'm gonna veg, as it were. Well, I will say, Alex figured out the problem with the passenger side car door that he accidentally. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. I figured out the answer to it because you know you can't open the door from the inside now. And I said to him. Well, you just roll the window down and open it from the outside. Yeah. Ta -da. Wow. So, so I get another twenty years out of that car. So I broke your I broke your car, but I also <laughs> fixed it. 
Hey, listen, it's been wonderful to talk to all of you. And I had to do, I, even though I was, did not have the energy really to do this show today, it, 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 you guys invigorate me. So Glad you I, re- made it. I really appreciate it. Len LaFrisco, thank you so much. And uh, Andrew, thank you. Uh, Mandy, wonderful thank seeing you. you again. Always a pleasure to have you here. Paula, it's so nice that you're now regular on the show. Yeah. So far, so good. Yeah, we really, it's a, you're, you're a great <laughs> guest. Uh, Mike Chisholm, thank you so much. Peace uh, love, they, they can hear your Letterman podcast where? Uh, the Letterman podcast is available where all fine podcasts are uh, shown and YouTube. Oh, well, it's not on Gabnet, so it can't be that good. Anyway. Well, let's talk. <laughs> okay. Maybe we can do that. Vernon I'm Nunn, th- thank you so much, Vernon. I always appreciate it. You know, you're an old friend now. Rick is perhaps the oldest friend I have on this panel. He goes back with me how many years? 1979, I think. Ooh. It was it 79? It was. Yeah, it was a birthday present. Yes, it was, it's another story altogether. Uh, and I didn't have to perform any sex acts or anything. Don't get that idea. Okay. At least not that time. Uh, uh, Jeff Stein, thank you so much for being with us. And Charlene, always nice to see you here. And now we will close with Edward Berger signing off for us. That's all, folks. <laughs> and he didn't have to change his voice to do it. Everybody, That's right. Please we'll tell all. Marjorie we said hi. Oh, we yes, give her our love. Oh, she feels I'm, better. I'm going over to Mount Sinai right now. <laughs> and I'm sure in her coma, she will be able to, to hear what I have. She's going to gonna listen to this and she's going to yell at you. Yeah, I'm sure she will. Anyway, thanks, everybody. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.